What's up, everybody? Welcome to the very first episode of Track Talkers. I'm Adam Entignav here in studio with my brother, Tyler Entignav. Say what's up. What's up, guys? My name is Tyler Entignav, 7 Deuce Trace, and uh, you're on the first episode of Track Talkers, and I'm excited to be here. Yeah, I'm excited to be here, too. We Every week, we go on the phone, and, and we talk about the races, and we've been getting further and further apart because we haven't been racing together, and we kind of have separate lives, so... Felt like this would bring us together. Yeah, and I'm excited to just talk about moto with you. I mean, we do it every single weekend <laughs> on the phone. After every heat race, after every main event, <laughs> we somehow call each other and be like, dude, did you see that? Did you see the interview? <laughs> do you see what Kenny says? Did you see what Cooper Webb says? We're going to get that into that a little bit later. Yep. And then we also, you know, me and Addy love fantasy motocross. We so, love it. So we're going to have a little segment on that, too. So Love it. It's yeah. going to be awesome. And, too, you know, I had all the studio equipment and the music equipment, so it was kind of a no-brainer. And I felt like, you know, Ty and I, we seen all these people that don't really ride motocross or weren't on the floor, you know, Mm -hmm. and they're coming up with kind of a little bit of BS, and we wanted to give you a a rider perspective and make it fun, you know? It's like it doesn't have to be serious all the time, but, you know, we want you guys to get the truth And at the same time, have some fun while we're doing it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, dude, our last name is Entignap. And (laughs) if if anybody knows us, we like to have fun and we like to be very turned up and very loud. So, you know, um, we're creating our own podcast, Track Talkers. And make sure you guys subscribe. Oh, shoot. Subscribe. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Because Uh, we're going to be doing these every week. Yep, every week. Um, So let's get right into it. First segment, ooh, fantasy supercross. Let's Pulp go. Pulp MX. How'd you do? I got two thirty nine. Oh, okay. Here we go. So Ty calls me on the phone. He and he's like, "Bro, what'd you get? What'd you get?" He's like, "Super excited, right, dude? I I beat you. I beat you." I'm like, "No, tell me what you got first. He's like, two thirty nine, and I was like, "Oh no way, bro." I got two forty nine, sucker bird. <laughs> hey, I guess I'm a good teacher because <laughs> two really, years, yeah, two years ago you weren't even playing. <laughs> I mean, I guess yeah, I'm that's like, bro, true. you got to get on Pulp MX Fantasy, dude. And right now, I'm like a hundred and twenty third overall, bro. Damn, that's pretty good. That's Hopefully, not bad. you can keep it up. And you don't fucking just dude, totally I've, endo I've, your brains out. I've and just, kept it up this long. I mean, we'll see. I have had a couple endonesia. You know what's races though. You know what's funny about this guys is we have a phone call about our <laughs> fantasy picks a couple times and every single time we talk about our fantasy picks we do somehow worse. Way we get, worse. we do way worse than when we <laughs> don't talk to each other. Yeah, I don't know how it is, <laughs> but let's go We talk the... to ourselves into a bad decision. Okay, so oh, who do you bro. got 250 class? Bro. <laughs> oh, this is not good. Jordan Smith. Oh god damn. Poor Jordan Smith. He was right looking at the so end. good. Oh, he was looking good. Um Carson Mumford come up maxed hey. out 50 points. Michael Moseman risky pick but came up on top and then the other dude that really came up Lux Turner. Yeah, coming off a uh, pelvis injury that he suffered, I believe, Anaheim 2. Yep. Um and I've known the the family a little bit when I lived up in Nevada. What do you mean a little bit? You trained Lala quite a bit, right? Yeah, I actually trained Lux a little bit, too. Just up at at 95. But, yeah, super good family. Um, Stoked to see him doing good and stoked to see him do the LCQ win. (laughs) I mean, who doesn't like to win in Supercross? Even if it's for the LCQ, it's fucking sweet. And I'm even more stoked because you, my boy, got me (laughs) some points. Let's go. Who'd you pick? So, my 250 team was... Levi Kitchen for um, my all-star pick, Nate Thrasher, nice. Michael Moseman, Carson Mumford, and that was it for my 250 team. Where I did pretty good. I was one I was one rider off. Like, Nate Thrasher, I could have, you know, done a better pick there. Nate Thrasher but, was a good, like, over-under, though. You know what I mean? Like, Nate yeah. Thrasher, in my perspective, he I, w- I almost picked Nate Thrasher, but because of, like, 
you know, the up and down. Mm-hmm. It's I don't think he's that's been proper ca- English. I mean, up he's and been, downness. Yeah, but he has been going up and down this year. Like he's either yeah. doing really good or he's kind of outside the top ten. But luckily, he scraped by twenty four points for me. But going in my four fifty picks, uh, for my all star pick. I picked Jason Anderson, didn't get maxed out points. I got 17 points with him. Mm. And then I picked Cade Clayson, kind of a little risky pick, but he made the main event, got me yep. some points. Yep. Picked Hunter Lawrence. I thought it was a good time for him to kind of step it up. Oh, and yeah. And then Vince Freeze at a five. I knew he was, you know, he did have me stressing <laughs> quite a bit when I see him in the LCQ Bro, with I Ken Vin- Roxon. I picked Vince, too. And then watching the LCQ, just seeing, like, the five guys going for the last three spots. <laughs> that like, was intense. Stress. We're gonna we're gonna get to that in a little bit, but I ended up picking Eli Tomac. Uh he got me twenty two points because his handicap was six mm-hmm. an all star. And then I went Benny Bloss, which I was really skeptical. I think at last week he had a um a little bit he struggled just a little bit, but I went Hunter Lawrence as well, and then Vince Freeze. Mm. Also, yeah, so I think I did pretty good. I mean, 249, the average score this week was a 197. So, the above average boys, baby. Oh, yeah, come on. Hey, let's, let's go. go. I'm coming up. All right, next, what something that your boy invented, lit kit. <laughs> let's go. Okay, Who so do you we got, got this week. So, we got Jet in the purple gear, mm. the all purple gear, Chase Sexton mm-hmm. in the white and red. And Dude, black. Alpine Star does so good, like, color combos. Oh, like, Dude, I feel like they beautiful. match so quick. Like, beautiful. And then the other guys that I have to mention, mm-hmm. Ryder Francisco, and I'm putting the whole TLD team on the lit kit because of their Ghostbuster oh, yeah, the mechanics Ghostbuster, outfits. Yes, the Ghostbusters theme and yeah. the whole crew on the same Ghostbusters. page. Ghostbusters. Go Buster. <laughs> Ghostbusters theme. And then the other people that I thought looked pretty good this weekend because it was their hometown event was Moto Concepts. Yeah, with the Seattle Seahawks gear. Yes. Yeah, I that thought looked that looked really good. really good. Canvas did that setup, and that looked good. Okay, so I don't know. My number one is like a tie, mm. and that's because that I'm leaning a little bit Ryder Francisco. Because of the whole TLD team. Mm. You know, I would give it, if it was just, like, singular, like, best kits, Mm -hmm. Chase Sexton has it. Like, no question. It looked, that red, black, and white kit looked so clean, like, from head to toe. Mm -hmm. Like, it just looked professional, classy. I know, but you know where where they sold us, I feel like? Where? When I watched the broadcast, TLD kind of, like... I got invested with TLD with yes. the Ghostbusters backstory and Dude. you know Troy be like, Oh yeah, I'm gonna do this custom bike, I'm gonna do this well, bus, like, custom hand um paint job in the helmet. It starts with the helmet and it goes from there. And I was like, God damn, that shit looks sick. Right? And then then to top it off, you got all the mechanics and Ghostbusters uniforms. I know. I don't I mean, yeah, obviously I mean, every lit- all the all Lit the teams, teams, like, obviously all the teams are matching, but you rarely ever see, like, mechanics match the gear and, like, the theme they're, like, wearing, except for, like, a retro night or, yeah. you know, some sort of like that. For sure. So, unfortunately. I vote TLD. I do. So, number one, we're going TLD for the whole Ghostbusters kit. hmm Number two, and the only reason... Not the only reason, but Ghostbusters wins because they had the mechanics and the Mm -hmm. head to toe. I think that's just, you got to give it to Yeah, when you say lit kit, it better be head to toe. Yes, but that Albin Star gear Mm -hmm. was so good. So by itself, Chase Sexton's. Okay. By itself, Chase Sexton's second. Mm -hmm. And then third place. Motor Concepts. Yeah. I mean, it's got to be right. Yeah. It, it might even be when a second one, because of the better, Seahawks. Yeah, you better do. You better put that. Second who are, or who third. are we putting second? Who are we putting second? I would are say we, Moto Concepts because the Seattle Seahawks gear looked pretty sick. Like I know, I, and they and did and the they, bike. Yeah, and they did like the white bike to match it. It was it was clean. So we're going, we're going TLD. Mm-hmm. Then we're going Moto, Moto Concepts. Concepts. Then 
our boy, Trey Sexton. Boom. Congratulations, everybody. That's your top three lit kits from the weekend. Oh. All right. Well, let's jump right into it. Heat one, Levi Wait, Kitchen. Like, before or before we kind of get into the races, do you think we should talk about the track? We can talk about the track a little bit. Let's yeah. Let's talk about the track. Okay. I, I think we should. I saw this on Instagram. Yeah. And I don't know the answer to it, but there's a covered stadium 250 feet to the left of the Seattle Seahawks stadium. And it's a baseball stadium. And I have no idea why we can't race in there, but it would solve a lot of issues in Seattle because I know I've raced three times in Seattle and all three times I has think been no, all peg dragging nonsense. Yes. Or like w- there was one time that was actually hard packed, but the dirt was like, I don't know. I, I rather honestly ride it muddy because the dirt was so shitty dry. Yeah, totally. You know, it's moon dirt. It's moon dirt. If and, it's not completely and too, wet. And the other thing about that dirt, why it's so shitty is because it's like sandy with bait, like rock in it. Sandy. But it doesn't get better when it gets wet. It gets worse because it's so saturated with water. It just becomes like, you know, when you step mm-hmm. on it and it like plunges do you think or whatever. They got, do you think they got new dirt? Because no. I remember, because I remember like when I raced it, it was a, I felt like dude, it was a lot it more sandier. Ma- yeah, but dude, it doesn't matter. They have to like ship it in from another state, bro. Like you can't I, even I just get feel dirt like from It almost feels the like they Seattle, got it out like of like from, the bay or something, you know? Like, like out of the river bottom. You got to go shit. outside Washington, Oregon, Idaho. Like you can't even get anything uh, yeah. from anything over there in that direction. I know. Feld would have to truckload. 4,000 semis of dirt <laughs> from, like, you know, like, where's a good spot? Texas? Yeah, I know. It's Some just, Florida or Texas dude, dirt or something? Yeah, that dirt is, like, the weirdest dirt I've ever, like, rode, it's, period. It's not even, I don't even know what it is, bro. It's like, what I was trying to explain it to um, another guy, and I explained it, like, it was, like, road base. It was, like, that gray, like, sand, but it had, like, rock in it. And and then it was also silty too. Yeah, like it was like hard, like really in the first like three or four inches. But then when you broke away through that crust, it kind of just was like going away. Yeah. And then somehow this weekend it started like holding up and started like getting ruts in it, like Indy. What I just don't understand how it how it did it like that. It just must have been so soft. Yeah, but like I was watching videos of the track and the ruts were folding in on each other. And Mm. that's like what happened to Kenny. And then I saw a video of Chase, like where he went through the rut. And that's typical with Seattle. We're like Indy, you know, the rut is going to stay pretty much all night. And and then you'll see like the peg drag marks and kind of carve your bike through it. Yeah. It's not going to fold in on itself. And that was, that's always been the problem with Seattle is like that dirt is like, it's literally like kinetic sand, bro. That's what it is. You know the like the child's play yeah, kinetic the sand? Yeah. Where it like it's not play doh, that moves. kinetic sand where it's mm-hmm. like you pick it up and it just keeps falling apart, but you can like pack it. Mm-hmm. But as soon as you start separating it, it just like falls apart. Yeah. I swear it's like kinetic, it's the kinetic sand track. I mean, fuck give a shout out to Dirtworks for doing such a good job with the track. Even how gnarly it was, I felt like with the conditions they were dealt with the weekend, with the weather, with the yeah. rain. With how many bikes were on the track, I felt like it was a pretty good track for what they I were I mean, dealt. absolutely. Like, with the rain coming in that morning, too, and just, like, everywhere. It's just, Seattle's just a, sh- I mean, unfortunately, it's kind of a shithole. Yeah. You know, like, and, and I don't what, mean and, that, and, like, because I love the city. I and love too, the like stadium. And, the pits and the race love- setup is so sick. Like yeah. The pits are totally inside. Yeah. You have a short little ride to your practice. Yeah. And it's not like a super long walk. You're not walking across the barge like yeah. you are in San Francisco or San Diego. Yeah. Like, I feel like the setup is pretty sick, and that's why we keep on, you know, that's why Supercross keeps on going back. Yeah, I get, when I, I don't know. I mean, when I say shithole, I, I guess I really just mean the dirt. <laughs> yeah. You know, and like, we know it's going to rain in Seattle. Mm-hmm. You know, so it mixes it up. But the dirt is just not 
It's not the dirt. It's never been the dirt. And I think you're right. I think they have changed it, and I think that no matter where they get it from, it's just not going to be that great. Yeah. Because what they do do in the offseason, people, is if you um, follow Corey 100, I think, Dirtworks Corey, on Instagram, he actually, some of the stadiums, like Detroit, I don't think, I don't know, I know Detroit, they sifted all the dirt. Yeah. Um, every, you know, yard of dirt in Detroit, they got sifted in the off season. So like these dirt works guys are actually busy throughout the off season. They go to like Seattle, go to Detroit and they pick and choose places where they need to sift dirt. And they'll like put it through a freaking dirt processor and try to get all the rocks out and then yeah. save that dirt year after year just to make it really good. Yeah. And it's unfortunately, I think it, it's just hard to find good dirt, you know, yeah. especially in that area. Mm-hmm. which well, sucks, and too but. like you know f- you know it's not like the dirt pile because you know a supercross track without the floor is around 7500 yards of dirt so like you know who's going to cover that dirt pile year round off of snow and rain and everything like that it's just not going to happen yeah it's not it's not going to happen you and know then, so and it rains up there so much yeah totally but um so let's get into let's some get racing into one yeah. yeah uh levi kitchen Whole oh. shot, eight second lead or something over Hampshire and wins. Dude, just like turned another page. Definitely. To me, it was like the Levi Kitchen we saw on the Yamaha when he got the whole shots, mm-hmm. but we're seeing it all the time. Yeah, way more consistent. Yes. He is starting to find that place where we know he had it. But yeah. he's just finding that place more often. You know, he can tap into that now, and I feel like that has a little point of, like, going out on his own in pro circuit, doing his own thing, believing in his own program, not having to fucking be, you know, charged every day on sprint laps and stopwatch over at Star Racing. You yeah. know, sometimes it helps, but obviously it wasn't, you know, it wasn't helping Levi Kitchen that much because he's definitely stepped it up and he seems really happy right now. Yeah. And he's finding that place more often when he gets in the main event, and that's where it counts. Yeah, and I I really wonder, you know, every time they, they've talked about it on the broadcast and he says, you know, the bikes, I like the bike better than the Star Yamaha, which is, like, just m- absolutely mind-blowing to me. Mm-hmm. You know, like, how could a bike be better than a star 250 in the 250 class yeah and somehow levi kitchen is making that bike look better like the way that mitch has that bike set up from Mm -hmm. suspension to motor to the the connected throttle the chassis everything the bike is not moving um it's staying nice and straight it's got good hold up it just seems like everything's going right so i guess my question you know for you is is it that is it the bike or do you think this is levi kitchen maturing like you said and being on his own program like how much how much of a percentage do you think it's okay the jump to mitch payton being on that bike actually made the difference or was the difference that he got away from star and is on his own program you know light bulb i'm gonna answer your question real quick but um, light bulb just went off on my head. The people that are doing the best on this Kawasaki, let's just say body build wise, okay? Yeah. Levi Kitchen, tall and lanky, yep. kind of super consistent, starting to feel the bike more. Cameron McAdoo, tall and lanky, kind of starting to feel the bike more. Seth Hammaker, kind of short, stouter, you know, shorter rider on the yeah. shorter side. Yep. Kind of still inconsistent, crashing a lot. Maybe him, maybe the bike a little bit. I mean, awesome. Forkner, short and stout, kind of crashing a lot, doing the same thing, you know. So I'm looking at all angles. I think, you know, it definitely seems like the bigger rider on that rigid kind of Kawasaki frame is definitely working better, in my opinion. And And I don't even know if I would say the frame's rigid, but the suspension is stiff and it's Holding they up. like to run it stiff on, like over there stiff. on the tent. Stiff. And then also, I think Mitch really found something in the motor last year. Oh. Midway through. Oh, With yeah. this new bike. And it's kind of carried it over in this new season. We got and some motor. 
and some chassis stuff, I think. And it they're just starting to build on it. Yeah. And, and the riders are starting to find some confidence and and belief that, oh, my bike is as fast as a star Yamaha mm-hmm. and I'm going to get, you know what I mean? I'm able to get the start. And like, you know, as a rider, like I think a lot of people don't know this, but like when you find a setting that you can build on and then you're not changing it constantly. Yeah. Like and you going know that it's a positive and not a negative. Yeah. Or not the same, and it's a positive, and you're moving in the right direction. It's so easy for a rider to kind of build off of that and just keep the momentum going as long as like injuries allow him to just keep on improving for sure. And I think that's what you're seeing with Cameron McAdoo and Levi Kitchen. So, okay, so back to the question hmm. what percent out of a hundred percent is it the switch in program versus? The pro circuit bike. I think it's sixty percent Levi, forty percent Mitch. So, so sixty percent program, forty mm-hmm. percent bike. Yeah. Okay. If I had to do a percentage pie. Okay. So. What about you? Where are you land? Where are you landing? Like Mitch Payton team and bike in Levi Kitchens program. I'm saying, I'm saying eighty percent program. Oh, you're even giving more. Yeah. I right. really do think so because my thing is I think that I don't I don't know how I don't know how to do that percentage by because my thing is right now I think the pro circuit bike is as good as the star Yamaha. I think either one, it's just rider preference now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like if you get on the star Yamaha, I think it's got a more on off power and a softer suspension feel. I think on the pro circuit Kawasaki smoother power, stiffer suspension feel. Yeah. What do you want? Mm-hmm. And then for me, it just looks like Levi Kitchen's program. He believes in himself so much. I think being over there with Chase Sexton and doing that program where he's like, you know, I don't, I don't know this for a fact. I'm just guessing, but mm-hmm. this would be me. You know, I'm over at Star Yamaha and I got fucking. Deegan and Smith and fucking Thrasher on my fucking ass every day. <laughs> oh my and god! And I'm like, and it's just like stopwatch I'm like, nationals. Fuck you. you know what I mean? Yeah. Fuck and you. you're and you're so lining what? up with them on the same gate, trying to battle a championship well, not with the only guy that, you're like waking up next to. You're seeing at the track every single day. But you're you know you're just basically dick measuring every single. That's day. what. I, that's exactly my point. Like you go to the track and it's a pissing contest. You know, because everybody at star is watching right mm-hmm. and so you're trying your hardest to win because you want to look like the guy during the week and everybody's egos are so big well that's going to waste that's going to put a lot of stress on your riders that's not needed yeah levi kitchen is in a situation where he doesn't have 6 7 of the top 250s that he's riding with every day yeah. he has the mystery of Oh, what did Levi Kitchen do today? What mm. was his lap time? He can take a break that his body needs and go back home and not stress about, oh, man, I didn't beat Nate Thrasher today. What's the team going to think of me? Yeah. And he can go back home and rest his head and not give a shit because, oh, I took the day off and I didn't have to beat anybody. Nobody's seen me. I know I'm doing this right for my program. Mm-hmm. And his ego isn't trying to get a hold of him. And then he can go to the race and just get his job done. Yeah. And there's no extra added pressure or stress during the week. Yeah, and I think, honestly, it's it's the perfect timing, you know, for Levi Kitchen. Like, Levi came in on Star Yamaha, was kind of built through this program, definitely found some speed through that program, got yeah. a good fitness base, and then, you know, after he got comfortable in the pro ranks and realized, hey, you know, I don't really like this program, I need to switch it up, I think he made the perfect maneuver to... Mitch Payton getting on a solid team, solid bike, and now you're just seeing it all come together. Yeah. And I fucking love to see it. Yeah, I know. I I love to see it too. I I honestly love, I love Leave Like Kitchen, and I love his style too. So yeah. and cool, cool to see him get it done in his hometown. Yeah, absolutely. You know I mean? really and cool. you know, coming now next weekend into St. Louis. Yep. Triple crowned. He loves triple crowns. Yep. And uh, I mean, he's got a long ways to go, but he sure damn looked. He, good, bro. Yes, especially with the good. red plate. And this is the 
biggest win margin we have had all year. 21 seconds. Wow. Yeah. I mean, Jordan Smith crashed, but still. Yeah, dude. That's huge. A race is a race. Yeah. Period. I mm-hmm. don't care. Um, on to Heat 2. Joe Shimoda finally gets a start, bro. What is happening over there in, on that 250 with Joe? So, like, so he leads the whole race, mm-hmm. throws it away right at the end, finally gets the start he's needed this entire season in the heat. We're mm-hmm. not even talking main event yet. Finally gets it. Looks like he has some speed. Then throws it away at the end and then gets back on his bike and just looks like so chaotic, right? And just so frantic and just like launches his bike into the side of the track like for almost for no reason bro you know exactly what happened he got into his head and he started relaxing too much and Dude, started i think thinking it was the much. opposite i think not relaxing enough and he was so tense because he hasn't done it this whole season and then he just threw it away and then went to frantically get up and just and launched his bike yeah, but I think like, that, bro, where I think was that he all going happened in the all crash? at once. Like, when he, like, I get it, like, when he was trying to get up, he made another mistake and hit another tough block and was just like, holy shit, I got to get out of this. Like, I just threw away the wind. Yeah. But still, like, up to that point, Joe was doing exactly what we wanted to see him at Anaheim one, he just figured out because you even forgot he even got the fake start in practice and then he whole shot at heat two. So he's starting to figure out his starts. And I listened to a um the Pulp MX review show and they interviewed Lars and Lars was just talking about how they've been working a lot with the ECU and a lot on the bike to kind of get Joe comfortable off the grate and get him to the starts and they were really happy to see Joe getting that fake start in practice, heat um heat two practice start or heat two race start. And yeah. um they just gotta figure out the main event now. And well, I think if they can figure out the main event with Joe and Heat Two, I mean, and just carry that start into the main event like yeah. they did in Heat Two, I think he'll figure it out. I mean, Joe hasn't been leading this whole entire year, and then he finally gets to lead, like, it's a whole different program when you're leading yeah. and you have to control your thoughts, you have to stay on your marks, and, two, you have to relax when you go down if you go down, and obviously he didn't. Yeah. He was full panic mode, made another mistake, but, you know, still made in the main event. I will say this. When I saw Joe um, in practice mm-hmm. in, on Race Day Live, I was like, oh, shit. The time off really helped him with his bike yeah, he was and working. his program. Yeah. You could tell, like, they were working really hard because in practice, Joe looked good. I was like, oh, wow, Joe could get a win tonight. Yeah. And I was really hoping, like, I even told somebody, man, I think I'm going to pick him in fantasy because Joe looks so good and it looks like he took that time in the offseason. And I think they did take the time. But – it's just so hard because I di- I didn't pick him for the exact reason that what happened last night, his inconsistency. He hasn't done it yet, and he mm-hmm. still hasn't. And that's something that I think is coming down to 100% mental. I yeah. think with how I saw the bike in Seattle, like maybe at Anaheim 1, I could see the bike not being right. Mm-hmm. He was on a Mitch Payton Kawasaki, totally different setup. You know, you don't really know till race situation. Either, like... I think he should have been better at Anaheim 1. I think everybody did. But it's understandable. You know, like, we can give him the excuse. But when I saw him in practice, how strong and comfortable he looked, that was 100% mentally his fault in the heat and the main. Yeah. I mean, I'm not disagreeing disagreeing with you there. But what I also heard on a review show is that he's having trouble, like, finding his lines at the beginning of the races like either heat races or main event races when he's not in that top three yeah. on the start because he's just getting roosted all the time and he's like riding other people's lines and it's taking him a long time to warm up and you know my rebuttal to that is like bro you're a professional yeah like this is not the first time you've ever raced a dirt yeah, bike like and got if, lux, roosted. if lux turner told me that i'd be like oh okay yeah no yeah we'll get yeah. it figured out like, bro, you know, like, but we're talking Joe Shimoda. Yeah. 
HRC Honda hired to win a championship. Bro, pass the guys. Even if you get an eighth place start, make the passes, force the issue, get where you need to be on the first lap, and go. Yeah, make the lines work. Yes, you know. I know that like you're gonna you're gonna need to find new lines, and you got to find your lines to find the flow to kind of get in the flow of the main event and to find your pace. But you know, sometimes when you're in that main event and you're tenth, bro. Those first two laps mean everything. Yeah, you can't find your lines in those two laps. You got to do everything you can to get past those guys. Yeah. And, like, okay, so I wasn't the best in the main event. Mm -hmm. I wasn't the fastest. I was not as fast as Joe Shimoda. Yeah. But I had a lot of fucking experience passing people. Mm -hmm. And towards the end of my career, I got good at it. Mm -hmm. I came from 15th to 18th in the LCQ on the start. And I could be in seventh to sixth place by the, by the checkered flag on the first lap. And I knew my odds were if I could be in the top seven when I crossed the finish line on the first lap, I was 100% in through the LCQ. Yes. That was my stats. And I found out that you can't be tentative on those first laps. You can't do it. You have to literally... Just send it with your life and kind of like almost cut the track. It's not normal lines. Yeah. You know, it's not just like, okay, I want to hit the fast line to pass them. No, it's almost like the slower line because everybody's caught up and you just jam it in there and you get to the next guy and you jam it in again and you Mm. jam it in again and you do the fucking jumps and i guarantee you this is not anything that joe's not hearing from his team or from nick you know his trainer or anything like that but it's just we're just you know analyzing it from our point of view but you could tell like the people that have the skill like take ken roxon for example like he's one of the best at it or even jet yeah you know when they want to slicing get, through the pack, yeah. When they want to slice and dice through the pack, you can step it up and get to that other level just for you know that you know two or three seconds that you need to pass yeah, that guy. Totally. And sometimes you know it's a comfortability thing. Like if you're not comfortable, like Eli Tomac in Indianapolis, like he was second around the start, and then he dropped all the way back to twelfth. In yeah. the two corners because he wasn't comfortable. Yeah. So there are factors that come into play, but it's just, you know, it's just yeah, but th- you're a also thing about talking being about a professional the, you're and talking figuring about, it out. Yeah, but you're talking about the 250 class. Yes. Joe doesn't have to pass Eli Tomac, Jason Anderson, Chase Sexton, Cooper Webb, mm-hmm. Ken Roxon. I mean, the list goes on and on, right? Yeah. There's, Joe Shimoda has to pass, you know, n- they're, they're you good. You know, Joshua Vries, Lux Turner, you know, guys um, like that. Yeah. You know Nate what I mean? Thrasher. Yes, exactly. And for Joe, he's got to do all the jumps in traffic and he's got to poke it in on the insides yeah. and just force the he's issue. He's got to learn and how that's, to take dude, educated risk. Educated risk, but he also has to learn, like, to be more aggressive because we've seen Joe be aggressive before, but it comes out so. You know, <laughs> unnatural. Yeah, unnatural, and like not that often. Yeah, you know it. He needs to be a warrior on that first lap, and I know how hard that is. It took me a career to figure it out. Yeah, absolutely. And you were still not that good at it. No, I wasn't. I mean, I I, I only it did it. I you were really good at it. I don't know what you're talking about. I was good at slicing and dicing, but like when I needed to like take some fools out, I was not that good. Yeah, but. You didn't need to take fools out because you were so good at slicing and dicing. You got so sketchy. Like, I've never, yeah, I don't, I don't even know how you did it. Um, moving on, Heat won for 450. Mm. Chase Sexton, whole shots. Ken Roxon comes around the first lap, like he always does. Mm-hmm. Heated AF, goes to pass Tomac, rut caves in, crashes. Roxon down. Roxon down on the first lap. Can't, I wouldn't say can't get the bike started, but definitely when he did get it started, you seen the defeat and he just kind of rode around. I know. 
And too, you know what's kind of weird? I felt like it was on a left-handed corner, just like his practice crash. Yeah. You know, not in the same section, but I it know, was but similar. that was that was a hundred percent rut. You know, I that, know it was a hundred percent rut, but it was still there was some similarities to his practice crash to what he crashed in the heat race. Well, let's put it this way: Ken Roxon was not comfortable in Seattle, and still came out with a fifth. Like he was not comfortable. What was his qualifying time? Like, wasn't he like fifteenth in the first practice? Yeah, I don't even think he got a quick time. That's what I mean. Not and good. Dude, so I, I was listening to a lot of review podcasts, but. I guess something that happened to him this week, he was picking um, leaves up, and there was a lot of pollen and stuff on the leaves. And I guess he got some allergic reaction or got congested somehow Dude, and kind of broke out with hives something. in his in his neck, and he was kind of etchy, and then he took Dayquil. He never takes Dayquil, and that even messed him up a little bit more. So He, he didn't was, take Benadryl? I mean, he said Dayquil. He thought it was a cold. So and he never takes day will take will he said, I'm just you know I'm yeah. just kind of just yep. don't totally. shoot the messenger bro totally straight up I'm just listening but he said he wasn't feeling good and he's happy to get out of Seattle with a fifth I mean I'm happy for Kenny to get out of Seattle for a fifth and a I fifth. think coming into St Louis with that Suzuki with that soft dirt I think Kenny's gonna be a weapon if he's feeling good Let's go baby weapon weapon. Um, still kind of in heat one. Uh, Sexton stalls it. Mm. Weird, super weird, and in like a funky spot too. Well, he hit the wall right, and yep. I could see. But why was he the only one that was stalling? That's my question. Well, Jet and then also two, stalled in the main event. Jet stalled in the main event. Yep, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. I missed that. Mm-hmm. Um, I wasn't on the bot- broadcast. Um. And then, why did it take so long to refire with electric start? That's why I don't I don't understand. Like because like I did it like not work with the clutch because the hydraulic clutch was like smoked because of the ruts? Or he didn't think about it. Like did he not pull it in and then let it back out and it wouldn't start? And then he had to like pull the clutch in and then hit the or, button. Or or was it just straight not doing it and he had to find neutral and he was like patiently? You're telling me he found neutral. No, 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 no. Like, he stalled it, was trying to get it started, couldn't get it started, and was, like, looking for neutral, found neutral, and then took off. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, maybe it wouldn't start with the clutch in, and that's why it took so long. Cause My first his- reaction would have been, like, stall, pull the clutch in, and then let that fucker out, and see so you go, bye-bye. Yeah, like, try to bump start it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean. Maybe he just needs to go trail riding more. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Um Either way, threw away the win. Yep. Um, but he was looking really good. W- looking really good. Hunter Lawrence wins. Dude, he looked good after he got out front, after Sexton yeah. made that mistake. And his shoulder is still feeling sore. Dude, like, I was impressed. Like, straight up, he rode good after he got back by Yeah, he Sexton. really he started looking like Hunter Lawrence that we kind of expected to see. Yeah. Um, took him a few races to get here. But I feel like that's a huge step in the right direction on his 450 career, like him not getting stuck in that, like, you know, 10th place rut in that 450 class. Absolutely. So. All right. Heat two. Um, Jet kind of had a late reaction time on the start, bro. Yeah, it wasn't his best. Dude, like when I rewatched it, he was super far forward, like way over the front. Mm-hmm. And it almost looked like he got ready a little late and the gate caught him off guard. And then he goes and he's just straight late. Just late? Late. I didn't watch it that close. Like, I don't know if he didn't have his. Do you think he spun? He might have spun. That's my, that might have been what it was. Like he was just so ready. He just yeah. Maybe he was so far forward and his clicker so far down. He just went, yeah. And just spun. And look at guys, you can spin on great starts. Well, you can spin on great starts when there's mud behind the gate. And it's wet. And your rubber gets wet and it's on metal and it can happen. Yeah. It's really hard, but, but it can it, happen. It, it can happen. And it's kind of been happening a couple times. Mm-hmm. You know, I was talking to Max Anstey mm-hmm. and he sent me a video of his bike spinning off the grate. Hmm. 
on he, a tacky track. Is he figuring it out? I mean, his starts haven't been the best. No, they have not even been close to the best. Mm. That's a whole nother story. Yeah. Okay. AP. Dude. Put, was looking good, dude, baby. Put down some heaters. Dude. The redneck cowboy with Bro, the freaking mullet haircut my boy, was looking good. My boy had to sauce in that heat for a minute. And then Jack came. <laughs> Dude, he was he was still moving. I was very impressed with you, how aggressive think, AP was looking and how much fight he had. I he like looks, it. He looks aggressive. Yeah. Which he looks sick. ready for anybody around him. He's yes. like, I think I can step it up. And, no matter what. Yes. And I love to see it. Yes. He is not. There is no timidness. From AP's yeah, riding I'm, character. I'm definitely, I'm actually, you could stamp it right now that I think AP will be on the podium or maybe get another win in the next two or three rounds. Wow. Okay. If he can figure out the starts and get in top five, I think that's a big if. He definitely has got some speed. Well, I don't even care about the speed, to be honest. All that I care about, like you just said, mm-hmm. is he had a different level of fight in his body posture mm-hmm. like he had i don't care what number is on that number plate behind me i'm just gonna try my hardest to beat them yeah no matter what is happening i can't control any other rider all i can do is control myself and i'm just going to go as fast as i possibly can for as long as i can I think it was and more, he did not care i think it was more of a mentality of I see this guy in front of me, and I feel so good right now. I can do what that dude does. Yeah, but he didn't have anybody in front of him in the heat. Yeah, but we'll talk about it. But in the main event, he had Jet Lawrence in front of him, and he was all over him. Mm. But he was looking good. Um, The other thing that I kind of seen, Ty, Mm. that I wanted to talk about, and I seen this in the main event, is – Dude, the guys were up shifting in the second rhythm. Did you see that or no? Which what? What are you calling the second rhythm? So after the sand, yep. you make a left. That would be what I call the first rhythm. Yep. Then you make a U turn where Jordan Smith crashed. That was the second rhythm. Mm-hmm. So there's two things that could be happening that I thought were interesting. That is crazy about the 450s right now. One thing is you already know what's the one thing is. Well. I, maybe I don't. But one thing is, were they in first? I think for sure. I think the people that were trying to go for the triple out of the in corner were in first. And I saw I, Jet and, and Sexton shifting up in that rhythm a lot. Yeah. I think the person, because right after that. Shifting up. Yeah, I know. Because right after that rhythm section is whoops. So, yeah, if but you they were shifting first, up after the first double. Yeah, well, that's why I'm saying, like, if you're coming in that corner and you want to do that triple out, you would be in first. Yeah. And then you would have to shift up to second and then do the second triple, and then you could shift up to third and do the third triple. Yeah. And then be in the same gear around that whole corner where you're not even going to have to shift in the whoops. See, but what I was kind of thinking is, like, too, were the ruts so deep that, you know, Mm -hmm. because I only saw the top, really the top guys shifting up. Yeah. Were the ruts so deep? That when they were they were trying to shift up to be in a higher gear to not load the bike as much and let the bike go that's, through the well, ruts. Well, that's when one of my notes that I put down was like, guys, okay, whoever's watching the podcast, if you're not a racer, listen up, okay. When there are deep ruts, like we had this weekend, or like we have in Indy in Indianapolis, you will see riders not really push through the transition and try to launch themselves from the deepest part of the transition off the lip and not necessarily get a boner air, but lift themselves off where their bike's not sinking down into the transition. Into the pocket. And it's a learned technique that I learned only when I was at super rutted tracks. Like, I've never had to do that in my life ever. Yeah. Like, it was an on-the-fly learning technique of, like... Yeah, where it's just straight, like... 
were pros and it was like pro intuition almost. Yeah, like you have to like be off the gas and then when your bike is in the transition, you got to be light and gas it off. You yeah. know, so your bike doesn't sink and stop and then endo like Chiz did. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, literally like Chiz because did. Because every because one if of you those load ruts, if you get if you get the bike in too low of a gear, like second or first, mm-hmm. and you go to hit that and you try to push your bike well, into that Well, not only lip. that, but you try to gas it. When you when you gas the bike, the chain tightens up and it pulls the rear end down. Mm-hmm. And what it does is it loads the bike down, which is putting more pressure down on the bike exactly. and the pegs. And then it drags those pegs and then, and then off. Yep. And See then ya. You're, you're going to Indonesia. Peanut butter and toast. Yes. Mm. Mm. But yeah, that that's kind of what I thought. I thought either first gear to hit that triple out of the corner, or straight shifting up to maybe even third, to like you said, get ready for the whoops, and then try to be smooth through those transitions because those jumps were big and they were still having to do them, and those ruts were insane. Yeah, you, you know, it's never fun. Like I was talking about this earlier with Addy. I don't think any rider out there was having a fun time. They yeah. were I don't even they think were like, Coop was. I mean, Coop won, so he's probably having fun. No, dude, he wasn't. He was slouched over like a <laughs> <laughs> But like, you know, that's like that's what's so harder gnarly. than morning wood, bro. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> but that's so gnarly about like these top racers, what I love to see. And I think that we 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 don't need to have more tracks like this, but I like seeing tracks like this in the series, these yeah. gnarly ones, yeah. is because you see the top riders in the world walk the tightrope of surviving and, and speed and pushing speed. Yep. And that's where, you know, mistakes happen, racing happens, a lot of passing happens because you're trying everybody's trying to walk because the, the fu- walk dude, the tight rope so right. in different areas and people are feeling more comfortable in different rhythm sections, different whoop sections and you can see that all night long. Yeah, and it's like, you know, it was just like Levi Kitchen kind of said on the podium. He's like, "Dude, I was just trying to put together good laps and I was still making mistakes." And that's kind of what you were seeing is that's why the racing, you know, in the 450 was so tight is because Good lap, good lap, good lap for Chase, and then mistake, and then Coop would catch right up, but then Coop would go good lap, good lap, good lap, mistake, yes. and then Jet would go good lap, good lap, really good lap, uh. huge mistake. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. So it was like you said, it was walking the tightrope of survival and speed Dude, at the same time. Can we talk time. about the 450 main event? Because I got, I want to talk about a few things. Okay, well let's run through these LCQs. Lux okay. Turner. The man, shout out! Hey, Lux let's Turner. go, Lux. Let's go, Lux. He hey, just man. came off a pelvic, uh, pelvis injury. Yep. Anaheim too. Um, came back super quick. Yep. Freaking little Gumby there. Shout out to the Turner family. They've been, um, they've been nothing but freaking sweet to me. And Lala Lux's sister is a fucking phenomenal writer. Yep. So if you don't know about her, check her out on Instagram. Lala Turner. She's doing amateurs right now, and she's, she's bad, dude. Ass. Yeah, she's Dude, phenomenal. Dude, she rides so good. Yes. Okay, moving on. 450 LCQ. Ken rocks and whole shots from the outside. But read the names off on that bottom thing. Uh, read the names off. Ken Roxon, Tr- Vince Freeze, Ryan Breeze, um, Rodriguez, Chiz, and Nichols all in the LCQ. And Masterpool. And In Masterpool. the battle. That was the battle. For the main event spot in the LCQ. Yeah, there was Our, six of them going for three spots. And, like, six good dudes that are all in the main event all the time. All in the same section. And they were all ripping. Yes. And then Chiz goes to Indonesia on the last lap. I know. You would think with Chiz's experience, he, he wouldn't, wouldn't do that. But Dude, Chiz that, hasn't that just, been... Chiz hasn't been as chizzy lately. No, not this year. But he was, I think he was hurt and sick. Mm. So that's not a good combination. No, it's been a it's been a little, it's been a rough year. Yeah. Um Ken Roxon's first ever LCQ. I can't even dude. Oh my God, right? Dude's I don't even want to tell him how many LCQs I've been in. Oh, <laughs> I've been in every single one, every single time I race. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't. <laughs> I made a couple through the heat. What's up, baby? Oh, okay. Shit. 
on to 250 main event. Ooh. Bro. Dude. Levi Kitchen. The kitchen's heating up. The kitchen's heating Let's just, up. Okay, we talked about a lot of kitchen, and he's riding phenomenal, and his program's on point, and yep. the bike's on point. Let's get to second place, RJ. We thought let's get let's talk about Jordan Smith, who had second place for the entire okay, let me, let's, moto. Let's go here because we don't we don't we don't have no boundaries on this on this podcast. Okay, no boundaries, no boundaries. Okay, none. Percentage pie. Jordan Smith wads up. He looks partly delirious. And then crashes like two or three more times, like a lap and a half, two laps after that crash. Like, where do we make the call of like, let's get this guy's a hazard. Like, I love Jordan Smith. Don't get me wrong. And he and he Dude, wants and to win a not, championship. Okay, it's but not it's like, that that where it's is not that point? Jordan Smith was a hazard. It's that he was hazardous to himself. Yes, and I don't even know if he was totally, like, if he was even coherent enough to make that decision for him. Yeah, but how, what do you do? Do you black flag him? No, I mean, you couldn't. There is, like, there is no situation for that, you know? But, dude, he was, I don't know, like, I don't know if he was just so devastated in his helmet, like, he couldn't think clearly. Yeah, but, bro, you know, like, like, we're at the end of the main event. We're exhausted. We've just been pushing to second place. Then we fully wad up and throw away. Our, your mind is like, oh, my God, I threw it away. And then you then, see a blue flag, and then you see Levi Kitchen lapping you, and you're just like, you mother. Ugh. Yeah, and then you got more ruts. You know, you're like almost um, cross-eyed, <laughs> bro, because there's so many Is ruts. that 12 or 24 <laughs> yeah, ruts? Am I supposed yeah. to triple or double off of this one? <laughs> yeah, like the dirt's all looking the same. The end of the, I mean, the, you know the how the lights ra- are looking real bright. <laughs> yeah, it's like the end of the race. The laps are going slow. <laughs> yeah, what is going on? Jordan oh, Smith, bro. He's I, Jordan Smith. I know. I love Jordan Smith, and the fucker is phenomenal. Dude, I want him to do good so bad. I want him to win the championship. I really do. Like, I, I love Levi Kitchen, and I want to see him win too. But, like, bro, I would rather see Jordan Smith finally win, bro. And he's been so many, he's been so fast for so many years, and he's gotten hurt so many times. It's like when is his time, bro? He's yeah. put in the work and the freaking, and he's had the shit happen to him that it's time. Yeah. The amount of work that Jordan Smith has put in to come back so many times, like, dude, people would quit. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Like, people have no idea, like, what, I mean, I have no idea, What too, Jordan Smith But I have no, like, coming back from multiple femur injuries, fucking ACL injuries, you know, just when you have to climb that hill again from ground zero, dude, it sucks. It sucks. But he's done it time and time again. I hope he gets back to it and f- gets on the high horse and, you know, comes back to St. Louis swinging. Yep. RJ Hampshire. Dude, where has the speed gone? I like that I'm not seeing these, like, dude, RJ I think, moments. I think the speed went with the crashing. Those two things left. You like, think that's what's happening, bro? I think he's, I think he's genuinely over, and the team is over him hitting the dirt from trying so hard. Yeah, be like, hey, bro, try eighty percent, like a, a little bit less. Like we know how much heart you have, RJ. You can't try that hard. And then now he's not. He's. It's not that he's not trying hard. Mm-hmm. It's that he's being. He's riding right under the line, and now. It's not good enough. Yeah, I don't know if he's not good enough because Bro, Levi's- it wasn't good enough. Levi smoked him. I mean, yeah. smoked him. But I don't know. I would like to see Levi. I mean, if it happens again, I feel like we gotta hit full panic button. Okay, yeah, that's true. You know what I'm saying? Because you guys can have a good weekend. It's a hometown race. I mean, he's used to the mud. I mean, RJ didn't crash on the one of the gnarliest tracks we've seen all year. Mm. And usually. Hey, hey. Come on, RJ. We'll give you a round of applause for that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And 
you know, he wasn't a talking point of sketchy moments whatsoever. Mm. And AJ, I mean, RJ came out with a second. Like, bro, that's not, not bad. bad. That's not bad. But the problem, here's the issue. Hmm. If RJ could have just been on the East Coast, he'd be winning the championship. But he's got to deal with Levi Kitchen. I know. That's I tough. Know. Yeah, that's tough. Super tough. Garrett Marchbanks rode good. Dude. Was on fire. I actually listened to the same review pod from Pulp and Max had Garrett Marchbanks on there. Mm-hmm. And he said that that's probably the best he's ever rode. That's cool. And he's feeling really comfortable on the bike. And he's got his starts dialed at club. But mm-hmm. the starts at uh, club doesn't have the plastic across the gate. Interesting. And he says it's changing. And he asked Phil Nicoletti for help. So we'll see what happens in St. Louis. Okay. Me and Garrett go way back. I've known Garrett yeah, since he was I, like seven. We Yeah, we've known Garrett for a long, long time. And That kid can rail a corner like nobody's business. Yeah, I can't believe how tall he is now. But yeah, it's insane. God damn. But um, Let's hope how he gets sick better. is it, though, that, you know, the Club MX bike is that is, good? Yeah. Top five in both East and West. So Un- sick. Unreal. Okay, on to Joe Shimoda. Mm. Bro. Joe. Dude, I don't know. You can't even say Joe. Dude, right you can now. because it's just like we I feel like there's so many people pulling for Joe Shimoda to win Bro, on the Honda. You know we what's, all want to see you him know win. what's so shitty about this? What? Is you know where we've seen this Joe Shimoda ride and shit come from? Think about outdoors last year, halfway through the how halfway through the outdoors, he he gets a win, starts figuring it out, gets some podium. Yeah, but, bro. It's like we've seen this song and dance before. Like, he does this every time. Yeah. And I hope he figures it out and carries some momentum into a new season. Like, yeah. I know that he's fast, bro. Like, obviously. Yeah. But you are getting paid to win races and be in championships, not being fifth. And not. No, he didn't. He podiumed. I know, but, but like, but he's fifth in the championship right now. Yeah, and behind Garrett Marchbanks. Yeah, and he's on a privateer bike, and you're on a factory Honda. Mm-hmm. Time to step it up. Yeah, I mean, he definitely. If we keep on seeing what we saw from him, yeah, at but Seattle, you're not gonna beat Levi Kitchen and Jordan Smith that stays up from tenth to. Fourth or whatever he was, crash. Yeah, and because then come this back. third, this third could have been easily a fourth or a fifth. Easily, easily, without Jordan Smith going down and a few other things happening, like Joe's fifth. Yeah, behind Garrett Marchbanks again. Yep. Yep. So he's got to get a whole <laughs> shot. He's got to get a start on that HRC bike. I mean, that bike is no different from what Jet was racing a year ago. Yeah. He can do it. He's just got to figure out how to do it. Okay. Here we go. Mm. Mm, mm, the mm. big dog for 450 main event. <laughs> I mean, what's the thoughts? Ken Roxon, bro, from the outside? Dude. How I think, gnarly is that? Bro, I kind of I kind of give it up to Kenny does using that same almost gate from the LCQ when he was super comfortable Dude, with it and like you know 20 funny? minutes before. Let me talk about that really quick. Something that people don't understand is like, dude, when you go to those outside gates, they're actually really, really good, good sometimes because the rut is so not deep because the main lines on the left get hammered so hard from the factory guys and their bikes coming mm-hmm. out so hard that those ruts get all deep. And I guarantee you in Seattle, it was gnarly chuckled. And he went all the way to the outside because he had to. And the rut was probably only one inch deep. A hey, condition over position. Boom. It worked. I, I mean, mean, you probably not ever picked that gate unless. I'm he saying that's probably like two out of 10. He's doing that. Yeah, yeah. Probably even less than that. But still, it paid off. Yep. It worked. And. He made it fucking happen. Yep. And then, so Chase out front, mm-hmm. right? Um, Jet kind of finally kind of gets a bad start. Two bad starts. Yeah. 
two bad starts, a heat bad start, heat rate. Well, I mean, he still came through, you mm-hmm. know what I mean, in the heat. But in the main, not very good start. I think no. I've seen him ninth. And then, dude, Eli Tomac, bro, 16th on the first lap. What? Dude, I don't even know. Dude, that's like some shit that I would be doing. Bro, just to let people know, like, there's only 22 people on the track. And you can, like, if you want to, you, like, Logan Carnal can be 16th around the track the first time. For sure. You know, can sneak around the inside, jump the doubles in the rhythm sections, and be 16th yeah. on the first lap. Yeah. Kind of without trying. So I guess we didn't see what happens because we weren't at the race, so I mean, he could have got caught up in, like, a little pileup or something. To. Dude, because 16th is bad yes. for Eli Tomac. Like, the worst Eli Tomac should be, a horrific start, should be 10th. Yes. Or or not start. I'm not saying that. Let's retract my statement. Around the finish line, when he crosses mm. the finish, yes, that, that's the better. minimum he should be is 10th. Yeah. Because everybody can get a bad start. Mm-hmm. But when you get to the finish line, Tomac should be at least 10th. Yeah. Because, like, this, let's just put this in perspective. Because when you're 10th and then you had the first place guy sprinting, from 1st to 10th is usually stretched out by, like, three or four seconds already on the first half a lap. Minimum. Minimum. And that's if everybody's doing the triple and the doubles and everything. Yeah. Like, there could be, you know, a crash or someone locks up in, like, you know, 6th or 7th, and then all of a sudden you're going to be, you know, 4 or 5 seconds behind. Just from lap one. Yeah. Like, that's a big deficit to be at with Chase Sexton, and, and let's, Jet Lawrence, yeah, and, and let's Cooper put it this Webb way. out front. Let's put it this way. When those guys put 10 seconds or five seconds on you in the first lap, when the start-finish line, then you got to pass them, and they're only tenths of seconds apart, 20 minutes ain't enough time. Mm-mm. You can't make it up. Yeah. It's not going to happen. The only person who's going to make it up right now is Jet Lawrence. And two, it's kind of wishy washy. When Jet has to come from the back, he pushes so hard that he makes those little mistakes. We saw. You know what I mean? And and he crashes. Like, for instance, the web jet crash in the sand. Like, dude, what were you doing? There was no way that was working out in Jet's favor. Zero percent chance. You think you're gonna get by Cooper Webb? On that inside I think, line. I think. Because it went to the outside. Expecting, like, I watched it a few times. And I could definitely see, like, Webb's front end kind of wash a little bit. And then Webb cut down. Yeah, but, dude. I, didn't, Jet I, don't, think Jet, I don't think Jet was going for the pass. I think Jet wanted to stay on his rear wheel over the wall. And get and to then the inside. Cu- cut to the inside. And, and pass him. him and pass him on that next rhythm section after the wall. Yeah. I'd be I'd be interested to see that cuz I know I'd be interested to know that cuz I know Webb did up, make a mistake he was, which made that scene look worse. Yes, because I think 100% Jet was picking that rhythm section after that wall to pass him. That yeah, was but his dude, spot and he was just getting ready. I don't uh, I don't know, dude, because he, that line funneled in behind Webb. So he wasn't getting side by side with Webb, no matter what. Yeah, but he did. Webb on the rhythm section after the um after the sand, Webb was going like roll three. No, no it was two, two, or was two, he going outside? He was, he was going outside two over the big one, and then triple on the back side of the one, and then triple and then double. He was going the opposite of, like, you know, how everybody was going two off the big one onto that, like, cutout table. Small one and then three up over the big one. And three up the next one. Yeah. So Webb was going, like, I think two in the beginning, like, and then. Whatever it was, it was the opposite combination of what they were doing. Yes, he was jumping, like, Cooper Webb was landing on the backside of what they were jumping off of. Yeah. Is how, how it ended up. Totally. So I think that's why Jet was just – he's seen that the lap before and was like, oh, I'm going to get him. And then Sexton stalls it again. Yep. 
and says that he bent his shifter in the rhythm section where he, he just almost totally, crashed, right? Totally plowed the tough block. Like, yep. Talk about some leg strength. And bro. it is. That was leg strength. And it is on the right side. So he might have a valid point. And I've, I've done had, it. yeah, I've had my brake lever bent by I a think tough block. I had it. And so he's saying it bent out and, and then, then it grabbed that rut, which that rut you did kind of drive in and then it you had like what, a hook. You know what you know? I, you know what I want to ask you too? What was I kind of thought was weird because it was just kind of like one line difference right by the mechanic, mechanics area after the finish line. You know the very inside line? Yeah. It was kind of smooth. Uh-huh. Chase always picked the one outside know, of it. And, and he was, was losing like, was, time every going, single lap. And was going in and like, uh, and like get hooked out. And I'm like, bro, you're losing like a tenth or two No, tenth. maybe more to Webb every time. Like, how did you not you see think, that? Like, do you think that was because of him not having a rear brake? He couldn't get in the inside and like drag it? No. I think he was thinking about other parts of the track, and I don't know. Because, obviously, he wasn't looking at the pit board because KTM put on the pit board, jumped the, the wall. Jumped the wall, and he said he didn't laps, even see it. He didn't even see it on the podium. And, luckily enough, halfway through the main the event. The rut was so deep, you couldn't even jump yeah. over the wall. And then he started catching Webb. Yes. As soon as they, as soon as Webb and Jet stopped jumping the wall because and they Kenny. couldn't. Oh, and Kenny. Yep. Because they couldn't, because the rut, Sexton Started now became the fastest guy. Yep. Which is pretty impressive. Very impressive. Like, that's, I, we have not seen that Sexton all year long. No, we haven't. No way, no how. So, Webb gets in the lead mm -hmm. and starts looking tired. Very tired. Like, we're talking... Sucking wind. We're talking arm pump city, bro. <laughs> Dude, like, my guy is riding, like, a hunched-over grandma, hanging on with his fingertips. Trying to hang on with his legs and, and survive. And somehow, still wins the race. Pulls it off. Like, it looked like he was dying, Right? Slowed down. Um, Sexton caught him. Then somehow pulled it the fuck back together. And still pulled it off on the last lap. With Sexton coming like a freight train, bro. Oh, he just ran out of time. He just ran out of time. But good on freaking Cooper Webb of hanging on. Dude, and then, oh my God. We got to talk about the last corner. So Sexton... Mm. Like, what do you do? I don't, I think that was checkmate. That was, I mean, that was checkmate for that situation in that time. But that's like the tough thing. Like, because I think if Chase definitely looked that over on film study on like Sunday or Monday and. Yeah. But if you go to the inside is, if you go to the most inside line in that mm -hmm. corner, all the way down at the bottom and just go and rail it, Webb beats you. If you try to do what he did, which was go outside and tuck underneath of him, he beats you. The only way you beat Webb in that situation is if you straight plow him and get no, your front I mean, tire I on think, the inside of his rear I think, tire. I think it would have been a different story because so coming out of the corner after the wall and the whoops, yep. Chase was already thinking, I'm going to cut back underneath Yep. Of Webb, and Webb was like, "No, you're not, because I'm gonna hug the tough blocks like these are F1 corners." Yeah, straight up. And at that point, I think that's where it's like, you know, and too like you could say like, hopefully Chase has a little bit of writer intuitions of like looking like having you know Cooper Webb kind of laying up like oh he's going to go out in inside with yeah. the speed he's going and then at that point Chase has got to just hold it wicked and rail the rut like your life depended on it and hopefully Cooper Webb doesn't cut your front wheel off yeah and you know like i think that's a learning curve for AMA Supercross and Dirtworks to not have like a corner that sweeps in 
to that last corner and let try to get more hay bales to make that a 180. You know what I mean? Yeah, like because that it, doesn't that doesn't happen if it's not a 180. That's what I mean. Like yeah. you go because you have to go too slow to get around the inside where somebody can actually rail. It was kind of like you know it was kind of like a yeah but, 100. I know, you know, but that's hard to do. I mean, you could really just do that by moving tough blocks. That's what I mean. But you know, that's maybe some AMA and Dirt Works and those guys should look at to leave the last corner, not just like block Belichick knee down four minutes left to go. Yeah, but that was a really good call on the fly by Cooper Webb. Dude, it was a fantastic call by Cooper Webb. Like, how often do you see that? You don't see that by anybody but Cooper Webb. Yeah, I mean, Racecraft, top tier. Yeah, 100. There was literally nothing Chase could have done in that last corner. I think if you would have made the decision of railing around the outside, the corner before, and got some more momentum, like it would have been mm. a different story. But that's like – I'm just saying he could have had a chance. I think he could have had a chance and made it a lot closer. I think Webb still would have got it, but I would have been a lot closer if he would have – Chase would have just pinned it into that most inside rut, mm-hmm. sent it into the corner, didn't try to line him up, and just pinned it. But he really thought, I think, that he could go out and cut back in. Yeah. but Because he thought Webb was going to take that inside rut, but Webb was like, nah, uh uh-uh. Yeah. I've done this. Yep. All right. Moving on. Yeah. That was it. That was it for the racing. Mm -hmm. Let's get on to the last two segments. My favorite. That dog. All right. This is your segment. This is your segment, dog. That dog. Give me a bark. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. That dog for the weekend. This is this is the rider that I think just has grit, determination, and just that dog. You know. Let me hear it. Ken Roxon and Lux Turner. Oh. That dog. Dude, for Lux Turner to be a rookie, okay, mm-hmm. this is hard. This, this, this is why he's getting it. For Lux Turner to be a rookie rookie, like rookie rookie, okay? He did do some futures last year. Yeah, but, like, we're talking this kid isn't at the test track with Star Yamaha every week. Yeah. You know, he has nobody to really go off of, and he's just training at wherever compound with whoever, Mm -hmm. okay? And he goes into the West Coast Supercross, makes the main on his first try, I think, right? Yep. And... Breaks his pelvis or hurts his pelvis. Yep. Whatever. Then trains and comes back, qualifies third fourth. or fourth, fourth because he's in the good practice. Mm-hmm. Then makes the main event by winning the LCQ at his second Supercross. That is so hard to do if you're not on a factory team. Yeah. This kid has that dog in him. I wouldn't. Period. I'm not disagreeing with you whatsoever. And the reason Ken Roxon gets that dog, mm-hmm. even though Cooper Webb should also get that dog, but the reason I'm giving it to Ken Roxon is because Ken Roxon, I know Ken Roxon. I like. We do. Yep, we know Kenny. Kenny is the type of guy where when he gets something in his mind. That's it. Yeah. If Kenny gets in his mind that he should win tonight, he's going to win. When I seen qualifying, Kenny did not have in his mind that he was doing good. No. And I know Kenny gets frustrated and is like, yo, you know, this ain't my shit. Fuck this track. Fuck this whatever. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? And And he qualified 15th, then comes back. Goes to pass Tomac, crashes, goes to his first ever LCQ. Whole shots from the outside, and then he gets, you know why he gets that dog? Because he qualified terrible, which Kenny's usually a good qualifier. Mm -hmm. Whole shots, almost whole shots the main event, and what, pulls out a fifth? Yep. That dog. And make make some points up on Eli. Hey, let's go Kenny. Let's go Kenny. Mm. All right. Last segment. Last segment. Last, Last segment, segment, bro. This is zebra, your sh- zebra stripes, bro. 
does lose the zebra keep or lose his stripes? And my my rider in the 250. Ooh, we're going 250. We're going 250. I think I know who it is. <laughs> who is it? My boy, Jordan Smith. Oh, don't do it to him. Is he going to keep the crash matic and getting hurt stripes? Or is this going to be a different year where he pulls it together and he can figure it out? Because right now, right at this moment, <laughs> is a turning point. And it's it more go, than a turning point. It, well, he could turn or he could keep on going straight. <laughs> or on or, the path he has. Or he could keep his stripes of crashing or he could lose them and make some new ones. Yes. Because we have seen this before. From Jordan Smith. <laughs> we have indeed. Right now. We have about right four now, or five stripes that have the exact same story on them right now. Yeah. And right now, it looks, correct me if I'm wrong, mm. but that he is 21 points off the lead, which in the 250 class is a lot. Is still, it's still possible to win because this is the 250s. Yes. This is and not, anything can happen. Anything can happen in the 250s. Well, anything can happen in Supercross. Okay, so so what's the verdict? Is Jordan going to lose his stripes this year? Yeah, but year? what's the verdict? Tell me. I think he's going to keep his stripes. You think he's going to keep the crash matic stripes? I think he's going to keep the crash matic stripes, unfortunately. Okay, okay. What does... We're constructive here <laughs> at Track Talkers, okay? So you think he... You're talking track... Mm-hmm. Okay, trash, <coughs> track, track, trash. <coughs> Saying he's going to keep his crash stripes. Mm-hmm. What do you think, if you're Jordan Smith, you got to do to to get those stripes away and get some new ones? <laughs> what What has he got to change? What has he got to do to get rid of those? Dude, I've never done this at his level, but I have Dude, crashed. pretty close. I have crashed a lot. Yes. In similar situations where you're doing good. And then you have mm. a little lapse of judgment. Mm. And then you think you can pull something off, but then all of a sudden you can't. And then you find yourself on the ground hurt mm. and on the couch looking at for, for look, another year. Yes, for another year. And luckily, he didn't. At the moment, it looks like he's coming back for St. Louis. So thank God yeah. for that. Yeah. Like, I would never want to wish an injury. I hope he never crashes again. That's why I'm. That's so what, let's get that's to the point. Not what I'm what saying. What does he got to do at St. Louis to lose those stripes and get some new ones? What okay. What is the key I'm ingredient? Gonna go, I'm gonna go deep dive on this. Okay, deep dive. So oh my God, when he hey, is, Ty, Ty, I'm swimming. I'm, and I'm we're, swimming with you. Hey, we're going deep. I'm swimming. We're in a. No, I'm we're, swimming with hey, you. We're in a goddamn submarine. <laughs> All right, this is how deep we're going. <laughs> but so when Jordan Smith is deep in the moto, like deep, deep in the moto, because these are, <laughs> hey, these are when the mistakes happen. How deep? <laughs> How deep? We're going deep. <laughs> <laughs> but in all seriousness, okay? Yep. He is mid moto. Yep. And. He's feeling good, and everything's on point. Yep. But when he is offline or gets crossroaded or something doesn't seem right, he's got to be strong enough to pull out and to back down and be like, okay, I'm just going to double here. So you're saying mentally strong enough. Mentally and be conscious enough of that decision when he's a little off, so pretty to much back down, so and pretty be like, much, okay, this triple that I'm gonna go for, and I don't know the outcome of, is not greater than my life. Yeah, but bro, that's the thing. It looks like to me, he has been more reserved this year. Oh, hundred percent. But he's so, super close. Yeah, but like, how much more reserved can you get till you're RJ Hampshire, where now you just don't have the speed. Yeah, but or RJ Hampshire keep... got second. I mean, That's yeah, the but balance. you got to beat. Dude, Levi this King. is the balance we're talking about. 
shit is hard. I'm not good at balance. Bro, we are not <laughs> as good my, at balance. That's my wife. Yeah, you know what I'm, I'm not that's, good at balance. That's my wife too, bro. <laughs> like it's just Damn. That's, that's where that's where it's like so hard because you're making these decisions it's on a motorcycle like to, on the fly. Yeah. And it's like it's like decisions of chance. Yeah. I like, mean it's like trust the process. Like because you want to sprint and go all out in the beginning. And then you want to have a good you know, flow in the middle, Bro. and you can pull off a lot of shit. Dude. But then all of a sudden, your knobby could be off to the left or off to the right, and you're not pulling it off, dude. You know how, you know how hard that is. Tell <laughs> me, tell me how hard it is, bro. How hard. It's about as hard as morning wood, bro. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's how hard it is. Hey, it is that hard. <laughs> it's honestly. as hard as morning wood, dude. Yes. Because like, I've been there. Because I've done that. Like I was a rider that, like, I had no regard for my life <laughs> up until I was bro. about like twenty two, twenty three, <laughs> where I started thinking like, "Hey, this might hurt." Yeah. You know, if I just gas it here, or if I just go for this, and it took me a while. Yeah. To figure that out, and a lot of injuries. Well. And Jordan Smith has been through the injuries. So the bottom line, the bottom line, is, it's really just have faith in. Trust the process. Have faith. Trust the process, and trust your decision making, and be in the moment. Yeah, but is he trusting his decision making too much? That's what I mean. Like, I yeah, it's See, it's like a, have faith. I, I think part. that I gotta like, I gotta you never, expand. We're never gonna know because we're not Jordan Smith. I'm yeah. just speculating here. Yeah, because I know what I've done, and I've you know paid by my mistakes from broken wrists, broken arms, and. You know, I've pulled off a lot of shit, too. Yeah. Luckily enough. But then a lot of times I haven't. Yeah. And he's done the same. And and you know what the hard thing is? Is, like, for Jordan Smith. And sometimes, dude, it's, it's you know, for lack of a better word, it's just fucked up. Because, you know, you do everything right. And you mistakes. And somebody's just better. Mistakes can still happen. And not not even anybody could, you know, someone always is going to be better, but mistakes still happen. You're riding a motorcycle trying to pick 13 different ruts and sometimes you're going to pick the wrong one, even yeah. if you're Jet Lawrence. Yeah. You know? It just yeah, is mean, what it is. I mean, the bottom line is you got to have faith that if you stay consistent and don't let your ego get a hold of you, and push the extra where you could cross that line and you stay, you hover right under that line, which means you might not have the speed, kind of like what RJ's doing. Mm -hmm. You got to have faith that somebody else is going to push it too far. And the toughest part, and the like, cards are going to fall yeah, into your and hand. To, and to you know, add and on to that. Sometimes in blackjack, you get an ace jack and you get the hand and you play smart. Sometimes you play risky, you get a blackjack. And sometimes, you play smart, and you don't get shit, and you play by the numbers, you don't get shit, and sometimes you play risky, and you lose it all. And yeah, it's like, but, God I mean, damn. But honestly, though, like, to to make it real, dude, you just got to analyze yourself and, and really see if that was, like, if you just chop it up to something you decided to do in that moment that caused you to make that decision, or... Was it line selection, or was that just a risky sec section that you should have been riding at 60% and then riding the rest of the track at 100%? Yeah. Like, those are the, you know, that's where you have to analyze the race, the track, and take that all into account when you're making those decisions. Yep. Well, good talk, bro. Hell yeah. Track Fun Talkers, one. episode number one. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for watching. We appreciate y'all. Um, like, subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you're listening on Spotify, tell your friends. Hey, let's go. Episode one, the Entic Naps, Track Talkers. Peace.